next topic. Next up, I, I I I ordered Polk XT twenties. I don't typically buy speakers. I just have so many. There's no need for me to buy any speakers, but I was curious about it because it's something that you reviewed a long time ago, Aaron, but with a bunch of other speakers. Like yeah. you yeah. reviewed the whole line, and so you had yeah. my shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went about, I ordered a Best Buy shirt off of uh, eBay. Yeah, I remember that. And you went through all of them, right? You kind of yeah. just went, okay, XT15, XT20, the center channel, XT30, boom, 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 tower speakers. Right. You kind of went down the line. It was a lot for a single video. Yeah. Um, but to me, there was like a little hidden gem in there in the in the XT20s. Yeah. I felt like it was like like a yeah, hidden gem. And so I was looking at spinorama.org. If you guys haven't been to uh, Pierre's website, that thing is pretty cool. It it takes a lot of the data, a lot of stuff from Aaron and Amir and and uh, Audioholics and you know various sites, and then it ranks the the I guess how uh, what what does he call it reference score? No, yeah, hold on a second. Spinorama.org. Let me let me just go to the site and show you guys. This is a cool site. I love this site. I, I'm I go to this all the time. So this is the site, and then you can see a bunch of measurements of various speakers. Yeah. And then if I go to, let's say, ranking, I can sort this by measurement quality. If I put high, oh, yeah. then it's only pretty much like yours and Amir's and yeah. uh, what, uh, whatever's been done on a clipple. Yeah. Or anechoic. You know what I'm saying? Right. So high, medium, low. Um, let's oh, that's cool. ranked. Look at say. Look who's... Look whose name is up there at the top. Look at who's ranked, Aaron. Oh, look, Aaron. look who's look who's number one in the listing. I don't even know what oh, ranking how that's ranked. It, but. You made it to number so it's, one. It's pretty awesome. Like you can start, um, you know, organizing things. This is one that I'm interested in. Did you see this one? Uh, oh yeah, the DIY one. Yeah, I, I was keeping up with that on the DIY audio group. Dang the directivity on that thing. Yeah, that's that's a really Pretty good speech. beast for. A, yeah. yeah, inexpensive oh, speaker. Really Did you explain to everybody why you got that speaker? Oh, sorry, I got I got sidetracked. So hey, hey, Polk, hey Polk. we just stopped rolls right there because that's usually the opposite. I'm I'm all oh, dude. And you're like Let's John, I met bro. I'm all over <laughs> the place. Uh, so here XT20 yeah. from Aaron's Audio Corner. Yeah. Now, hey. most people, what do most people look at? They're looking at the on axis response. They're like, Ugh, what is happening here? Baffle yeah. step. Oh, it's a little bit jagged. Probably some resonance, tweeter level, like old school yeah. Polk style, right? Big yeah. old boost to 10K. That's, that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this green line right here. Yeah. Because I all I care about, right? I, I have a calibration app. I'm I care about how EQable this thing is. And what it will sound like when we apply EQ. And I'm looking at that. I'm like, there are lots of more, much more expensive speakers that don't have directivity as smooth as that. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what Joe's doing. I, Joe's preparing for the next trade show where he's like, I'm going to bring <laughs> oh. some shitty speakers with good directivity. <laughs> I'm bringing the worst. <laughs> well, I'm not the worst, but the, the, the least expensive ones yeah. out of the whole thing. That's what I want to do. But we're, again, so we're going to have. Like, cheapest room yeah the cool thing is he shows what happens when you apply eq to this and you yeah. can compare it so this is with eq here on the right and on axis looking good right yeah and then he also shows the predicted in-room response pretty good these are 239 dollars a pair yeah <laughs> so you combine this with a a whim amp apply the eq i think you got a Pretty nice little system there. Add a yeah. sub when you can. Woo! I don't know. What do you see here? What do you, you're the you're the you're you're the expert. You're the professional. You're the I'm just oh man, we're, that was coming. I'm we're the dude all that. professionals now. <laughs> Remember, what you, we've been we've been paid. It's official. So, is there anything aside from the uh, you know the resonance? Anything else that you remember about it that could make it like yeah, that's all good, but. But, um, I, I, you know, it's been so long. I really don't remember at this point. I was trying to go back and look at my video to see if I had any kind of little comments or anything like that on it. 
EQ graphs. This is what I care about. Like, well, how does it take to EQ? Hey. Ah, man. So I look at those things. There's another one that I do oh. have. Hey, I, I made a video about budget stereo systems under a thousand bucks, and I use the Wim amp, and mm -hmm. I use the Polk XT20. Oh. No way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's already see. He's already on top of it. Yeah, I guess I don't have to make the video. Do it anyway. I am a professional. <laughs> I, see, I told you, I'm a professional. I'm a professional speaker. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one though. The other speaker that I think would be really good for EQ, and you've mentioned it too, is the Monolith Encore C6 Center. Oh, yeah. Vertically. yeah, I got that. You put I got that, that vertically, guy. right? Don't use it like the typical way. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, here, I'll bring that one up too, just so you guys can I see. Thinking, hey, Joe, should, I, I could do that for like my surrounds, couldn't I? Just get all around and surround back. And more of those. I Sucker. should get this before they sell out because okay, I mean, so here we go. Yeah, they've been selling out on that's it. 250. Right. So here here it is, 250 bucks. Which one should I look at if I want to see it standing up? Uh vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Vertical. Okay, so I here think it I is. measured it laying down. Mm, I don't Maybe. I think he's showing different because hold on, let me show you real quick the other one. Horizontal. That's what I was looking at. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that looks pretty good. If you put it the well, yeah. What is this? The other way looks like. Oh, uh, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I got you now. I was thinking backwards. Yeah. So I sent home the horizontal. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but if you stand it up, mm -hmm. right. So it'd be better that way. So this is what I always say is like people mostly look at this on axis response, right? And they mm -hmm. should. If you're not going to apply any EQ, then yeah, that's important. Mm -hmm. But if you will be applying EQ, I care more about the directivity right. and how EQable this is. So once this is EQ'd, you can expect something like this. Let me see. And this is the predicted in-room okay. response. I think this is a good one for... Um, this doesn't look that good, though. Hold on. This on-axis doesn't look so hot. You see this other one. Which one did I click on? I don't know. Did I click on? I forget which one I clicked on now. EQ graphs. Just do both. No. Yeah, go back. Anyway. Vertical. Throw, throw some EQ. keys on that graph. Yeah, no, no. Not this one. I think, yeah, that looks all right. Uh, I think the Polk. I think the Polk is the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was just looking for different speakers. Like, what is the cheapest speaker you could get that you could EQ and make it sound better? I I'm wondering if, if you plug the port, would that make it even better? Uh, for the Polk, I don't remember. I don't remember if it has a high Q resonance or not. So you'd look for two things. You'd look for a big bump on the bass region. Mm -hmm. You might look for a resonance in the mid-range. Um, if I had the polar data for it you could look at 180 degrees and see if there's a big spike at 180 like at the back of the speaker where the port you, is you did show that it okay. showed like a little little bit of red in the back okay where yeah the port like at a resonance or something i mean it's i don't know if it's from the port or from the enclosure leaking out the port but yeah if it shows red on the back of it then there is a resonance that yeah way. but uh, i wonder if plugging the port would help on that particular yeah, speaker it, it might it's hard to say for sure but it might. The, mm. the downside, well, I can go look at my data and just kind of give you a better idea. Yeah. <clears throat> talk about other stuff. Um, hold on a second. Let's see. Polk XT. Uh, I don't Is know. If you bring it up, because then you can you can kind of scroll through at your pace. Yeah, I'll just but, I'll throw the thing up. Richard, I see your super chat. We will get to your question about the Myers. Yeah, so... So I'm looking at the low end, right? And if I thought that there was a port issue or that stuffing the port would help, usually what you're going to see is like a, a base peak right there. It's going to be like a high Q or mm -hmm. mid Q resonance. Q would be like the, the width, like how wide is that resonance? Um, and if you've ever built a subwoofer in an enclosure design program, then you know what I'm talking about. You get a Q of one and you get a spike, you know, you get a Q of two, you get like a super sharp spike. 
Right. Mm -hmm. uh, point seven is a little bit more neutral. Point five is more rolled off. Point three is even more rolled off and extended mm -hmm. further. So I would say just based on the low end response that I don't know that I would plug the port. Mm. But then you also have to look in the mid range. And so there's this resonance here and there is this here. Uh, I can't say for sure that this right here is a resonance because it looks like it could just be baffle step as well, right? Like they didn't do a good job of baffle step um, compensation. And she's got like a drop off through the mid range. But regardless, you can EQ that out. So, yeah, I don't know. My gut is telling me to, to leave it open. Okay, so could there be cabinet resonance that comes through the port, though? Yeah, for sure. Like, if you yeah. scroll down to... I think you have some with your polar plots and stuff like that. Let me go find it. And who better to ask than the expert, the professional the himself? Pro. Yeah, than the pro. Officially. You... <laughs> this guy, That's hilarious. He's making stuff up. Uh, yeah, so what you're talking about it. So for those who don't know, what this is, is like if you're looking at a bird's eye view of the speaker and this will be the front at zero degrees. So this is where the tweeter is and the mid range is and the sounds projecting forward out of the speaker. And then this is the back of the speaker. And the reason that all of this is darker and this is brighter, more red, because this is higher SPL. Mm. And this is lower SPL. Lower you can see this graphic, this dark right. blue, 66 63. decibels, 63 decibels in the back of the speaker versus 93 and 90 toward the front. The front. Right. So when you see red that peaks up just around the back, usually that's an indication that there is a resonance and it's right around 800 hertz. And that can be caused by one of two things. It could be either the there's a resonance in the port itself oh. or there is a resonance uh, in the enclosure itself. And that resonance in the enclosure is basically just leaking out the back of the speaker through that port. The only way that you would know there's two ways that you could test this pretty reliably is plug the port and measure it. Mm. And then you could also do an impedance sweep where you measure it with and without the port sealed or not. And a, a quick impedance sweep will usually show a resonance going away. Mm -hmm. I mean, that takes like seconds and you can use that with a Dayton Dats. It costs like 130 bucks. Dayton Dats is mm. the best tool in the world for anybody who's wanting to play around with me. Make sure to check out our audio only version of the podcast at anchor.fm forward slash daily hi-fi or just go to your favorite podcasting service and search for Daily Hi-Fi.